traditional controllers or input devices can often be difficult or almost impossible for gamers with disabilities. Eye tracking offers a solution, allowing you to control your games using your eyes and your face. But expensive hardware for models that are already on the market often stands in the way. Luckily, affordable software that utilizes devices you probably already own at home are emerging. Today, we're testing two options, Kinesic Mouse Live and Playability. For full disclosure, Playability have provided me with free access to their software. Let's start with the hardware required to run both of these softwares. For Kinesic Mouse Live, all you need to have is a phone. For me, I'm using my sister-in-law's old iPhone, but you will need to be able to access the Apple Store. Meanwhile, Playability just uses any webcam you can have on your PC. For me, I'm currently using my Logitech C920. The main advantage I found with Kinesic Mouse Live using your phone rather than the webcam was that the facial recognition side of it was being processed on my phone rather than with the software on my PC. This meant that it wasn't using much processing power on my PC, so that spare processing power meant that my games and OBS when I'm streaming ran slightly smoother. But by no means did playability software make a major impact on the frame rate on my games. I just felt a slight difference from streaming where sometimes I would have a few drop frames here and there. But if you're not trying to max out your PC usage, you should be fine with playability. Both Kinesic Mouse Live and playability have plenty of facial gestures that you can use to trigger actions, including head tilting, blinking, eyebrow raising, just to name a few. And in both softwares, you can adjust the sensitivity pretty easily. With Kinesic Mouse Live providing live graphs displaying each movement that you carry out, so you can adjust the sensitivity to how you require. Whilst playability has slide bars on each facial gesture, again displaying visually how far you have to move your face to carry out each action, and again allowing you to easily change the sensitivity. Both of these allow you to control a mouse, a keyboard, and a controller. However, I struggled to get Kinesic Mouse Live to be a controller. I don't know if this was because I hadn't found the correct settings, but after around an hour of playing, I just couldn't get it to work. This leads into the complexity of both pieces of software. Kinetic Mouse Live takes quite a bit of experience to be able to get it correctly working for your needs with quite a complex user interface. On the other hand, playability has a clean, simple, and easy to use interface, which meant I could set up a controller within five minutes and was away playing my games. Whereas with Kinesic Mouse Live, it took me a little bit longer to work it out. I did, however, have some issues with the facial gestures on both pieces of software. I found that with Kinesic Mouse Live, sometimes it wouldn't track my head tilting and eye movement as well. Meanwhile, playability had quite a few facial gestures that would overlap and trigger each other. For example, if I have a gesture of winking with my left eye, but also one of blinking, both would be triggered when I blinked. With all accessibility devices that I use, I love having different profiles that I can set up for whatever game I'm playing, so I can easily switch between whatever key bindings I require for that game. Kinetic Mouse Live offers unlimited profiles, whereas currently, Playability, who I must say are in beta testing, only provide free, which for me isn't enough because I play a wide variety of games. Now let's get down to the one thing that I often find the biggest barrier to accessible gaming, the cost. Kinetic Mouse Live offers a one month free trial, but then after that it's £80 for a lifetime license. Meanwhile, Playability has a minimum supported pack charge of five euros. Having tested out both softwares on games like Jedi Fallen Order, Overwatch, and Fall Guys, I would say that neither software is perfect, but both do offer incredible value for their price. I would say Kinetic Mouse Live is ideal for those more experienced users that don't mind messing around with some of the settings and complex user interface that it offers, and ideally for those that want to play with keyboard and mouse, which is what I mainly play games with. This is because facial gestures were never overlapping for me, I had plenty of options so I could map however many keys I require 
to each facial gesture. Meanwhile, if you're wanting to play games that have controller support, playability is the route I would go. The user interface is simple, clean and effective, allowing easy setup so you can get playing your games quickly. The overlapping face gestures were the only major issue I had with the software, but as playability is in beta at the moment, hopefully they might find a solution for this. Ultimately, the best choice for you depends on your specific needs and preferences. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you want me to create tutorials on how to set up both of these softwares or whether you have any other accessibility tools or technology that you would like me to cover in an upcoming YouTube video. As always, happy gaming and I will see you all soon.